Hey friends, Ash here with 10 cents. Hope you're doing really well. Today, it's time to take a look at this one right here, Kenzo Aqua Pour Ohm. This one doesn't really get talked about a whole heck of a lot, and when it does get talked about, oh, that's the, the right way, not this way. When it does get talked about, it's not very positive. If you go onto Parfumo or Fragrantica or any of those websites, people uh, have been giving this one the big old thumbs down. They don't appreciate it. <laughs> they look at it and they just wanna throw it, set it on fire, or just smash it. In this video, I'm gonna let you guys know what I think about it. I'm gonna go over how it smells. I'm gonna let you know why Aqua is probably the worst name that you could possibly give this fragrance. I'll take a look at the presentation, all that good stuff. So let's jump into it. First up, the presentation. You got the name of the house, name of the fragrance right there on the front. I actually like the great wave design that they have right there. It looks really good. Size and concentration down at the bottom. Kinzo on the side and also the other side. And on the back, you have sort of a relief of what's on the front right here, no color. And then Aqua Kinzo Porom up there at the top and also on the top flap. Then on the bottom, you're gonna find your ingredient information, your batch code, your barcode. Your badge code is 9K01. And here we have the bottle. I actually really like the way this one looks. It's got kind of a wave design to the bottle, reminiscent of the low par Kenzo fragrances. On the front side and the back side, it is blue. You can't see through it. And then on the sides of the bottle, it is see-through, it's clear. You've got the name of the fragrance up here, Aqua Kenzo, right at the top. On the bottom, you're gonna find the sticker with your badge code on it. Cap does click into place. And your atomizer is offset to the side, as you can see right there. Now, even though this clicks into place, it's not really super snug. I wouldn't pick it up by the cap. And let's go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys here, or three. This one I picked up for about 40 bucks at FragranceNet, and it runs between $35, $40 on there, so it's not too expensive. And it's gonna be a little bit cheaper if you get the tester instead of the full presentation, but from what I can see, the tester comes with no cap, no box. So I went ahead and splurged, and got the whole thing. The whole enchilada. Okay, at the beginning of the video I said Aqua. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense as far as the name goes. And they're really pushing it. If you go to the Kenzo website, it says that it's for lovers of water only or lovers of aquatic fragrances only, something like that. Oh no, it actually says for water addicts only. So this is only for people addicted to water, drinking it or smelling it, I guess. So for water addicts only, that's who Kenzo Aqua is made for. And then you've got the design, the marketing, blue coloration, aqua, all over the place, aqua, aqua, aqua. You've got the wave, both on the front and the back. You've got the wave even more on the bottle. So everything about this is screaming to you. Summertime, fresh, uplifting, brisk, clean. And that's not it. I think it could be one of the most confusing releases ever as far as what it gets compared to. If you go to Fragrantica, people have compared this fragrance to Tom Ford's Black Orchid, Invictus, which doesn't smell like Black Orchid last time I checked, uh, One Million Lucky, Y Eau de Parfum, Paul Smith London, and Fusion DC from Isi Miyake. That is just a lot of fragrances that don't really smell like each other. So if you've never smelled this, like I hadn't until I blind bought it, it can be kind of confusing to know how this actually smells. So let's go ahead and get into that really quickly. It opens up with this sweet kind of green apple bergamot fruit combo. Smells nice, smells pleasant. And hazelnut, right away. You can pick that hazelnut up, working along with the bergamot and green apple as soon as you spray this one on. There's also little pops of fresh spice in there, but really it's mainly about that green apple and then to a lesser extent the bergamot and then the hazelnut right up there with everything else right at the forefront. And as soon as you spray this on, the second you spray it on, you'll be like, yeah, that is not an aquatic fragrance. And guess what? You would be right. It actually reminds me a little bit of One Million Lucky. So some people have said this reminds them of One, one Million Lucky and I agree with that. And also a little bit stronger with you from Emporio Armani. Now Emporio Armani Stronger With You uses chestnut. This uses hazelnut, but you get a similar feel. The kind of nutty warmth that Stronger With You has, 
you're gonna find that here too. And also Paul Smith London, I agree with that one. That's a discontinued fragrance, pretty difficult to find nowadays. So if you were a fan of that in the past, I would say check this one out. So anyway, there is an aquatic note here, but it doesn't really smell like an aquatic fragrance. More so that aquatic note just lends this little bit of freshness through the opening and the mid that sits behind the hazelnut. It is not close to being as noticeable as the hazelnut note is. It just lends a little freshness. That is the extent of the aqua facet of this fragrance. And that really pleasant hazelnut carries on for quite a while through the mid into the first part of the dry down. It melts with tonka, which adds a little bit of a semi-sweetness in there along with the hazelnut. I mean, the hazelnut's already a little bit sweet, but the tonka just kind of bolsters that a little bit. And then as it settles into the dry down, you pick up a little bit of woodiness, some cedar, some sandalwood. So that comes out, mixes with the tonka and the remnants of the hazelnut from the mid. The cedar gives you this sort of soft, woody, spicy pop every now and again. And the tonka provides a light underlying sweetness in the far dry down. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, some people seem to really not like Kenzo Aqua. I'm not sure if it's because they were thinking it was going to be very aquatic. They got it in and they were like, wait a sec, this is BS. This is not what I signed up for. And then proceeded to demolish it online or if they just you know, genuinely don't like the way it smells. But for me, it's actually pleasant the whole way through. Opening, mid, dry down, all of it, super appealing. Like I mentioned, it has some similarities to One Million Lucky, to Paul Smith London, even a little bit stronger with you. And all three of those fragrances are generally held in high regard. And I would wager that if you like any of those three fragrances, you'll like this one too. It has that same wearability, that same versatility that those three fragrances has, and it has that same mass appeal, that compliment factor. For example, my wife loves the way that this one smells. She gave it a big thumbs up. She was pretty enthusiastic about it. So. I've got nothing to complain about here. Fragrance cost me right at 40 bucks, maybe a little bit under. So that's really much less than you're going to pay for the three fragrances that this gets compared to. And yet it does everything those fragrances do just in its own way. In terms of performance, actually pretty good. Longevity, eight plus hours. So that's above average for me. Projection, more moderate, maybe slightly above average. Not a beastly projector. It's not gonna leave a huge scent cloud as you move around, but it does well enough to get the job done. No questions asked. In terms of seasons, for me, it's more of a neutral weather kind of fragrance. So we're talking spring and fall. You could potentially pull it off in summer as well. Not really as much of what I would consider a winter fragrance, but because of that hazelnut, you could realistically pull this off in the winter as well. It's either a day or a nighttime fragrance, in my opinion. You can wear it to the office, you can wear it casually, you could also wear it to a date. As I mentioned before, lots of versatility here. This is one of those times where I saw the hate online and I said, you know, I'm gonna check it out anyway. I'm gonna go with my gut. And this time, actually turned out well. This is a blind buy I don't regret. This one is not an aquatic fragrance. It is very confused. Kinzo is confused with this name. I have no clue what they were thinking, frankly. I mean, you can spray this on, like I said, immediately and be like, hmm, aqua, watery. No. I mean, maybe for 2.5 seconds when that bergamot and that green apple is just there right in the opening, if you smell it right away, before that hazelnut creeps out, you might be like, hey, wait a second, this is gonna be pretty, oh, never mind. No, no, that's, yeah, that's not aquatic. So the name is bad. It doesn't really work all that well, frankly, but the fragrance and that price range, 40 bucks and below, really good. So those are my thoughts on Kinzo Aqua Pour Homme. Not as bad as people say. Kinzo Aqua, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.